So I saw this text and my first fleshly thought when I read it, which feels really ugly to admit, but is the truth that I need to confess, was hello and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, today's video, I need to confess something. And no, this isn't clickbait. This is a real life example of sin. I came very close to choosing willingly and deliberately literally this past week, even though I knew it was wrong. And so I'm going to share with you what happened, what God did to stop me from choosing that sin. One, because I feel like it is a testimony of God being glorified, even in the ickiness of my own heart. And two, because I honestly just feel like it is an incredible, powerful example of how God's word transforms us. For me, it was literally like being played out in real time. Like this is how God's word is meant to work in our hearts and our lives to make us look more like him. And it points to why it is so important for us to be reading God's word. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that so much of my content is Bible study content and digging into God's word. And what I'm going to share with you today speaks to why doing that, why reading God's word is so incredibly important. And so before we get into it, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I make Christian faith and lifestyle content. And my aim is always to encourage you to know God through his word and to grow in his likeness. And I would love to have you here. And if this video encourages you, which I always pray that it does, then give it a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and get into it. So lately I have been trying to read a proverb a day. If you didn't know, the book of Proverbs has 31 chapters, which is perfect because it's literally one chapter for each day of the month. And it's sort of like a Proverbs a day keeps foolishness away because Proverbs is all about wisdom. It is a book of wisdom and it shows us what is a wise way of life, what is a foolish way of life. And so I have been trying to read one every single day in addition to whatever other book I'm reading through. I'll read that day's corresponding proverb and proverbs 18 it is all about how our words are so powerful you've maybe heard before proverbs 18 21 which says death and life are in the power of the tongue and this is actually one of the verses i pray over my baby boy every night that with his tongue he would speak words of life and i actually made an entire video sharing all the bible verses i pray over each part of his body every night so if you are looking for powerful scripture to pray over your baby i'll have that video linked above and then I'll also have linked down below a print I created, which showcases all of these different prayers. But anyways, that's Proverbs 18, 21. As I was reading through Proverbs 18 this time, what stood out to me is actually verse eight. It says, the words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. When I first read it, I thought like, oh, that is so sweet. Gentle words are like this delicious food. They speak soothing and salve to the heart and they sink down in and bring truth. But as I was reading through it, I was like, I'm not really sure if that's what it means. And so I decided to look it up in the Enduring Word commentary. That is a free commentary Bible study app. I'll have it linked down below. It's always linked down below in my videos under my Bible study tools section. If you ever have questions about any of the tools that I use for Bible study. So I looked it up in the Enduring Word commentary app and JK, the sweet meaning that I thought it had was not actually the meaning. Turns out that when the verse uses the word whisperer, that it actually means tail bearer, as in one who tells tale, i.e. gossip. So here's what the Enduring Word commentary had to say about this verse. It says, the gossip and evil reports brought by the tail bearer are almost impossible to resist. Those who know better find it difficult to tell the tail bearer to stop talking, yet the damage the tail bearer brings is great. The words of a gossip in an unguarded moment may inflict irreparable injury. And so the idea here, as it says that the words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels, the idea here is that gossip is irresistible. Even though we know it is wrong, even though we know we shouldn't do it, in the moment where somebody is sharing something or there is that choice to partake or to not partake, we know we shouldn't, but it is so difficult to resist because we want that delicious information. We want to be in the know. I feel like sometimes our motivations can even be so insidious as to feel like we want to know bad things that people are sharing sharing about another person so that we don't feel as bad about ourselves. In short, what this verse is saying is that gossip is so hard to resist, but we need to resist it because it brings destruction. 
So now let's get to the story time part. I don't know about you guys, but I am a big voice texter. I feel like the voice texts that my friends and I send back and forth to each other are really like mini podcast episodes that we're listening to, just getting caught up on each other's lives. And I really enjoy it because I feel like it's just a little bit more personal. It's easier than sometimes we're writing out a big old long text. But anyways, big fan of voice texts. So that verse that we just talked about that I shared with you, I read that on a Monday. And then on Friday, I got a really long voice text from one of my best friends friends and when she sent it I was in the middle of filming like I'm doing now and so I wasn't able to listen to it and the rest of that day was pretty busy so I didn't have a chance to listen to it then either and then on Saturday morning I got a written text from her and she was basically just saying I am so sorry for that rant I know that that was inappropriate and unnecessary and honestly I was just losing it yesterday but instead of going to God and letting him soften my heart in prayer and bringing those emotions before him she's like I just dug in pridefully and I wanted to complain and vent about this person to you over voice text. And I'm super embarrassed by that immature decision. I know that so many Bible verses talk about how a fool is loose with their words and that was totally me yesterday. I'm so sorry to dump that on you. So I saw this text and my first fleshly thought when I read it, which feels really ugly to admit, but is the truth that I need to confess was, ooh, I wanna know what she said in this voice text. I wanna know what she was venting about this person. I want to know the tea. The next thought I had was not my own thought. It was from the Holy Spirit, and here's what the thought was. The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. God was bringing to mind the truth from the verse I had read in my Bible four days before, that gossip feels irresistible, but it leads to destruction. And so began a little wrestling match that took place in my mind over the course of the next maybe five minutes or so, and I'll kind of walk you through what that looked like, but I was genuinely wrestling. Even though God brought this truth to my mind, even though I knew it was wrong, I thought, well, I could just listen to this voice message as if I never saw her text because I want to know what she was saying. I want to know what she was venting about. And it's not like I would really be doing anything wrong. Like if I had never seen her text and I had listened to the voice message right away, that wouldn't have me been doing anything wrong. That would have been me listening to what my friend sent me. And so it's okay if I listen to it. She meant to share it with me. I can speak encouragement good, truthful things to it when really in my heart I wanted to know what it was she was sharing. That is the ugly part to admit. And God was kind of reminding me like, look, if your friend knew that what she shared, or maybe not even what she shared, but the way she shared it in that moment of frustration and just wanting to vent, if your friend knew that doing that was wrong, you have an opportunity to protect her by not listening to that voice text because it's not beneficial to do so. She said that she shouldn't have sent it. Not only by not listening to the voice text would you be protected protecting her, you would also be preventing that sin from spreading because now if you listen to it, you're partaking because you're wanting to hear what it was she was venting about. You're wanting to take in that delicious morsel. And I knew the right thing to do. I knew that it was not necessary for me to listen to that voice text, that if there were things to talk through and pray through constructively after the fact, that could be done in another conversation, not by listening to the things she said in a place of needing to vent in the heat of her emotion. I knew the right thing to do, yet that sinful, fleshly part of me was genuinely wrestling with doing it. And part of me was like, man, I really just want to listen to this message. It's not going to hurt anything because I wanted to know. I wanted that delicious morsel. As I was wrestling, I thought about, or really God brought to mind, how something that I've been praying for is fruit. I want fruit in my life, fruit of just looking more like Jesus. I want to exude his fruit. And fruit comes through obeying God's word, not just knowing what it says, not just making a YouTube video about what it says, but by obeying what it says. Obedience to God's word makes us look more like him. And when we delay our obedience, we delay the beautiful work that God wants to do in us through our obedience, and we delay becoming the type of person we actually want to be. Because my thought in this moment was, I could just listen this time, it's not that big of a deal, and then next time a clear opportunity to indulge in gossip presents itself, I'll obey that time, I won't do it that time. And God was just reminding me, like, if you truly want to exemplify me in your life, if you want to exude the fruit of your spirit and just be somebody who shines me brightly, then why do you want to delay becoming that person? Why do you want to delay me refining you right here 
here and right now in this opportunity by submitting yourself to what I have said. So after this five minute wrestling match, I ended up submitting to God, submitting to the right thing to do. And I texted my friend back and I said, look, I actually hadn't had a chance to listen to your voice text yet. And I know that if I did listen to it, no part of me would judge you or think anything differently of you based off of the things that you've said, because I've been there plenty of times before as well, where instead of humbling myself before God, I chose to dug my feet in as well and to pridefully vent when I shouldn't have. So there's zero need to feel embarrassed about whatever you said in that voice text, but also because I haven't listened to it yet, if you don't want me to, I can just delete it. And my friend texted back and she was like, honestly, that would be great if you could just ignore it or delete it. And now that my emotions have kind of settled, at some point we can definitely talk through the things that I was wanting to talk through from a more constructive place. And I knew my friend had really been beating herself up over having sent that text. And so I ended up taking a screen recording of me deleting it and I sent it to her saying, look, it's removed. Just like God removes our sin and forgets our sin and cleanses us of all unrighteousness when we confess to him. And and a couple days later, I ended up confessing to her about the little internal wrestling match I had gone through before coming to that right decision. And then I asked her if I could share the experience kind of from my end in this video, because again, I think it's just such a powerful example of how God's word works in our lives. And I wanna break that down. The first thing I wanna take note of from this whole experience is that when we're reading the Bible, certain things stand out for us, and that's for a reason. When you're reading the Bible and your attention is drawn to a particular verse, pay attention to that. Dig a little deeper, ask questions, look up a commentary to understand more what it means. Because if your attention is drawn to something specific, quite likely that could be the Holy Spirit drawing your attention to that because there's something more he wants to show you. It wasn't anything revolutionary when I was reading through Proverbs 18. It's just the verse that happened to stand out to me was Proverbs 18, eight. And it caused me to think about it a little bit and to think like, hmm, what does that mean? And to eventually look up a commentary about it. And so when you're reading the Bible, certain things stand out to you and that is not a mistake. That is not an accident. That is by design. So investigate those things because quite likely there is something that God wants to speak to you through them. And if you are not confident about your understanding of a verse, or you think maybe you understood it incorrectly, look up a commentary. Again, ask those questions because I think as we kind of move from like, here's what I think it means to like, oh, here's what it really means. That process of discovering that makes the thing that we learned stick in our minds more and makes us remember it more. The second thing I want to take note of about reading our Bibles from this experience is to talk about what you learned with someone. The thing I actually forgot to mention as I was telling the story is that Monday as I read through that verse, because of sort of that whole experience of thinking it was this sweet thing of like words of a whisper are like these gentle, soothing things and how really it meant like gossip is what it was talking about. Um, after I had my quiet time that morning, Tyler and I were talking and I told them about it. I was like, here's what I thought it meant, but I looked it up and here's what it actually meant instead. And we just had this brief little conversation about it, but I think the importance of talking to somebody about it when we learn something in God's word is because that act of having a conversation with another person about it further ingrains that learning, that truth, that even memorization of that verse, it ingrains it into our minds and our hearts. And talking to somebody else about the things we learn as we read the Bible is one of the many ways that we can practice meditating on God's word. God's word commands us to meditate on it. It says, to meditate on it day and night. And to meditate is simply to think deeply or carefully about something. The more we meditate on something, whether by thinking about it ourselves, having a conversation with somebody else about it, the more we are going to remember it, the more it is going to seep into our hearts. The third thing we can glean about reading our Bibles from this experience is to don't just hear the word, but obey what it says. John 13, 17, Jesus is talking and he says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. The blessing is not just in the knowing. It's not just in having the Sunday school right answers. It's in doing what we are told to do in these verses. James 1, 22 through 25 also says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror 
mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. I have an entire Bible study with me series going through the book of James if you want to dig more into that because it is an incredible book. But basically what it's talking about here is, again, blessed are we if we do and not just hear. The word of God is his perfect revelation of himself to us and his standard of how we are called to live. And it is meant to hold up to us a mirror of all the ways that our lives are not in line with how he has called us to live. And is literally like looking into a mirror. It's meant to reflect back to us that we have a giant piece of spinach in our tooths and to hear the word of God, but not do what it says is to like look in a mirror, see that giant piece of spinach in our tooth and walk away and do nothing about it. No, the purpose of that mirror is to reflect to us that piece of spinach so that we can remove it, so that we can be conformed more into the image of Christ and look more and more like him. If I were to have gone on and listened to that text, even though God was bringing to my memory that verse that says, the words of a whisperer, gossip is irresistible, but it leads to destruction. That would have been like me looking at a mirror, seeing spinach in my tooth, this desire in my heart, this ickiness in my heart to know the tea and walking away and doing nothing about it. And here I am now walking around with this spinach in my tooth when God was trying to save me from that. He was trying to conform me more into his image and make me look more like him. The fourth thing I want to point out is that disobedience will always cost you something. Praise God, his word and conviction won out in my heart this time, but there have been plenty of other times I've chosen the sin. There's been plenty of other times where I've disobeyed and it's always cost me. Like we talked about in my Jonah Bible study with me series that we just finished here on YouTube, disobedience will always cost you something. When we disobey God, there will always be something that we lose, whether that is the fruit of him making us look more like him, whether it's a relationship that is now damaged or tarnished because of the sin that we chose, whether it is peace or freedom from guilt and shame that we now lose out on because we disobey or blessing that we lose out on because we disobey, disobedience will always cost us something. The fifth thing I wanna point out is that reading God's word allows the Holy Spirit to remind us of God's word in the moment of need. John 14, 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is to bring to our remembrance the truth that we need in the moment that we need it. And it's almost sort of like this library that as we're storing things away in our heart, the Holy Spirit is bringing those things to our remembrance in the exact moment that we need them. But he cannot bring something to remembrance unless we've first heard that thing and know that thing. And so I just think it's such a beautiful, powerful example of the Holy Spirit's work in my life and his power that he brought my attention to this verse on a Monday. He caused me to look into it, to investigate, to talk to my husband about it. And so because of it, the truth of this verse was lingering in my mind all week. And then when I encountered this situation where I could have given into this gossip and tasted this delicious morsel, he brought to my remembrance that which he put in my heart four days before. And so as we read God's word, Word, it enables the Holy Spirit to remind us of God's word in our moment of need. The sixth thing I want to point out is that we shouldn't just turn from our sin. We should get rid of the temptation altogether. This is actually an insight my friend pointed out when I confessed to her the wrestling match I had gone through and she was like, yes, make the video. Is she pointed out that, look, you know, if you had even just decided to ignore that text message and instead of deleting the text message, which was one more step that I hadn't even really asked you to take, if you had just ignored it, well, then there's the possibility then in a moment of weakness, you would have decided to get curious and listen to it because it would have been lingering there ready for you. But instead you removed that temptation altogether. And I think this is a really key principle that where possible, we shouldn't just turn from our sin, but we should remove the temptation altogether. Now I know this scenario was very cut and dry and I had a very clear literal way that I could get rid of that temptation by deleting the text message. So it wasn't even there for me to be tempted to want to listen to it. And I know that not all situations are that cut and dry. We're not always able to so clearly remove temptation from our lives, but whatever we can do, whatever we can do to remove ourselves from situations, to remove temptation,
temptation from us, as much as that is possible, we should do it. The seventh thing I want to point out about reading the Bible, and this is the glorious truth of the gospel, is that even though the Bible reveals to us our sin and our sinfulness, when we confess our sins, God removes our sins, forgets our sins, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, I am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Psalm 103, 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And again, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just like that text got deleted and my friend's sin was no more, my sin of wanting to be in the know, wanting to have the tea, wanting to indulge in gossip was no more in the same way. What Ever sin in our lives, when we confess it to God, He will remove it, He will forget it, He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How crazy cool is this story? How good and faithful is our God? And how powerful is His word to transform? I hope this was an encouraging story and little lessons that we took from it. If it was encouraging to you, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And I would love to hear from you down in the comments. Has God given you a prompting recently that you knew you needed? to obey. And I'm going to be sharing in a pinned comment down below a little tidbit I read from the proverb I was in this morning. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.